By now, I'm going to guess that you've heard everything you want to know about the inventory shortage in the housing market. If you're a buyer, you're probably a little miffed that homes are put up for sale on Monday and they're gone on Tuesday. I would imagine you're also a little miffed that there are multiple offers, I mean like 15 to 20 on every house you look at, and your offer is not getting accepted. Today we're going to talk about what the home inventory means to you and what you can do about it. We're also going to talk a little bit about what you can do to buy a home if you don't have that magic 20% down payment. Let's get started. Welcome to our favorite YouTube channel where we talk about Florida, the Tampa Bay area, and real estate in the Tampa Bay area. If you're interested in any or all of these, you're going to want to click on that subscribe button down below and hit that notification button as well. We will let you know when our next video is published, which should be next Thursday. Hi, my name is Mike LaVoy. I am a realtor with Dalton Wade Real Estate here in the beautiful Tampa Bay area. My wife Paula and I have lived in the Tampa area for over 30 years and absolutely love living here. Among other things, we really enjoy helping people with what is probably the largest single transaction they're ever going to make, buying or selling a home. Have questions about real estate here in the Tampa Bay area? In the comment section down below, there is a link that you can schedule a telephone call with me. We can make that a Zoom call if you would like to. Paula and I really enjoy putting out these videos, and I know you've never actually seen her in front of the camera, but she is helping. And one of these days, I'll get her on this side of the camera. We really like making these videos, but we want to make sure there's something that our adoring public, you, would like to watch. If you have a suggestion about a topic related to real estate, living in Florida, living in Tampa Bay, we would like to know. There's a link down below that will get you to a page where you can send us your request. And yes, we do take requests. Let us know what you want to know about. We will try to make that happen. So let's face it. If you've been trying to buy a home in the Tampa Bay, St. Pete area of Florida for the last six to 12 months, it ain't been easy. You could characterize it by using several adjectives, some that can't be used here, but if you're selling, it's like you hit the mother load. I mean, giddy would be the adjective. If you're trying to buy a home, frustrating comes to mind for most buyers, somewhat unfair for a lot. One of the reasons for both sides of this is that the home inventory in the state and most of the country, the number of homes available to purchase are at all times low. I, I haven't seen, I've never seen, and I mean, really nobody has. We have been in a seller's market for several years, running at about two and a half to three months of inventory of homes. What that means is that if there are no more homes put on the market, there will be no homes for sale at all in two and a half to three months. A normal or neutral market is usually defined as having six months of inventory. As of the end of June, the Tampa Clearwater St. Pete metro area has 0 0.8 months inventory. That's about three weeks, yeah, <laughs> three weeks. We are definitely a seller's market. To say anything else would be a large understatement. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. So, you're a home buyer. How do you navigate in this market? I mean, how do you actually get a home under contract? And better yet, should you even get into the fray? I mean, maybe it's time to stand in the sidelines and just wait. I'm gonna give you a couple of tips, a couple of tricks, and a piece of my mind, which really shouldn't take all that long. First, find a lender who will actually work for you, and that does not necessarily mean a bank. The person processing your application at the bank normally gets paid whether you get a mortgage or not. A mortgage broker doesn't get paid until you close on the house. They are incentivized to get the deal done and on time. Get a pre-approval letter, and no, not a pre-qualification letter. There is a difference between the two. Your lender should be able to explain that, or I, better yet, I have a video that goes over some of the basics. Watch it later. The link is down in the comments section below. In previous markets, 
A pre-approval letter was nice. It lets the seller know you qualify for the mortgage. It's attached to the offer. It's kind of a, I don't know, add-on. Over the last nine to 12 months, the pre-approval letter is pretty much mandatory. You don't even submit the offer without it. Sellers and their agents will not even consider the offer without the pre-approval letter. I mean, really, why should they? The home has 15 to 20 other offers that were submitted with a letter. Not including it is a great way to get your offer tossed in the trash right up front. In this market, a good mortgage broker will call the listing agent once you submit the offer. This can solidify the pre-approval letter, make the listing agent and subsequently the, send the seller more comfortable with your offer. I mean, that could make a difference. The next tip might sound a little self-serving, but hear me out. Get with a realtor who has some experience and knowledge. Getting into this market right now is not going to be easy. It's not going to be fun. You're going to need someone who knows what an escalation clause or what a post occupancy is and when to use them. You are more than likely going to be competing with 15, 16, I don't know, 20 other buyers with offers of their own. An experienced lender will know how to get your wording into your offer to get the most likely chance of the seller accepting it. And that's really what we're all about, isn't it? So you're telling me there's a chance. Now is not the time to work with a real estate agent who got their license last month and is looking for their first sale. I mean, I don't even care if they're your brother's sister-in-law twice removed. Now, while we're here, don't even think about going it alone. A, it doesn't cost you to use it, it doesn't cost you anything to use a realtor. B, the realtor works for you and will go with you to see the house, assuming you actually get time to see it. If you wait for the listing agent to schedule the time you're going to have, the house is probably going to be gone. My third piece of advice is about creative financing. And no, I don't mean make, making up numbers. Obviously, when you're a cash buyer, there are fewer concessions involved. The sellers like fewer concessions. It's just fewer ways for the buyer to back out of the deal. If you happen to be a cash buyer, you are in the bird seat. Cash is king in this market. Cash buyers can make offers others can't. So. How do you be a cash buyer if you don't have the cash? It's called waiving the financial contingency. In Florida, you're allowed to waive the financial contingency and technically be a cash buyer, but you have better be darn certain you can qualify for that loan. I mean, you really need to have some serious discussions with your lender and financial advisor before you even start down this road. You are putting your escrow deposit in jeopardy if you go down the road and can't qualify for the mortgage. You're also at the mercy of the appraisal. A good number of buyers are just waiving the appraisal. Some sellers are actually demanding it as part of their offer. That's pretty much one of the unfair advantages that sellers have at the moment. So what happens if you waive the appraisal and you're not paying cash? You get to come up with a difference between the appraised value and the purchase price. Let's say, I know, your offer is $400,000 and it's accepted and you waive the appraisal contingency. You deposit $4,000 in escrow and go down the road. One day soon, your lender is going to require an appraisal. The appraiser goes out, looks at the house and returns a value of $400,000. The lender's happy, you're happy and you're good to go. But what happens if the appraised value comes back at say $390,000? That's $10,000 short of the sales price you will be required to come up with that $10,000 difference at closing. Now, $10,000 may not be a big amount to you, but what if the appraised value comes back at $350,000? $50,000 might make a damper on your finances and keep you from continuing with the purchase. You are more than likely going to lose your $4,000 escrow deposit. So be certain when you do this, you have to make sure that you can get the loan. Something else we've been doing is having the buyer make a larger down payment. Going with a 40% down payment can make a difference between acceptance and rejection. That might mean tapping into an investment account or 401k. Make sure you talk to your investment advisor before doing anything with investments. And you might want to talk to your CPA as well. The idea is that having a good amount of cash on the side will certainly help with either of these two options. And while I'm talking about the offers, I want to stay with that. Contingencies are the seller's enemy. They let the buyers cancel the contract. 
buyers have been started waiving these contingencies to get their offers accepted, like the inspection period. The inspection period is basically a free pass for the buyer and is negotiated during the contract and during the offer, the length of time, mostly days. From the seller's perspective, the shorter the inspection period, the better they will be, the better they'll feel. It is not uncommon for buyers to limit the period to five to seven days. In some cases, like for newer homes, buyers are just waiving the inspection period altogether. The trick here is to eliminate contingencies until you become uncomfortable. When you start to become uncomfortable, you stop. Like the appraisal contingency I talked about earlier. Not everyone can do that, financially or mentally. Let's cover escalation clause options just for a second. Let's say you find a home that you absolutely love and you're expecting multiple offers, which you know is not out of the, out of the normal right now. The list price is 500,000, so you offer 510 with an escalation of $1,000 over the best competing offer to a maximum of $550,000. Sounds pretty simple and on the surface it is. You as the buyer don't want to overpay for the house and this keeps it to a minimum. From the seller's point of view, you're trying to scrape by a competing offer rather than just making your best and highest at 550. This is sometimes all about perception. If you're using this clause and you continue to lose the deal, you might want to rethink that tactic. Earlier I mentioned that there is a way to buy a home without the normal 20% down payment. And that way would be to buy a new construction home. Homeowners are emotionally attached to their home and the sales process. We've seen some that reject an FHA or VA loan. There's really no good reason for that. They just probably used it years ago and had issues with either of those government agencies. They haven't quite figured out that the FHA or VA loan are both extremely to work with nowadays. Home builders are not that emotional. It's all about selling lots and homes, money. They work with FHA and VA loans all the time, hundreds of times a year and are happy to do it. FHA and VA loans have much lower down payment requirements. You can get into that home for a heck of a lot less than you can a conventional, and it's a new home. In days gone by, you could go to the model home center, pick your model, you might have some negotiation on the price, pick out your lot, your fixtures, your tile, and build a home, kind of almost custom. There was very seldom any competition for new construction homes, I mean, maybe on the lot. You might even get cash back from the builder to apply to your closing costs. Well, those are the olden days. Times have changed. Now, buyers are faced with competition from other buyers. Builders are selling homes highest and best in a bidding process very similar to pre-existing home sellers, and they're selling those homes. The other downside is supply. At the moment, with most builders, there is a nine to 12 month wait period before you can move into the home. So you're gonna have to wait to move in. I'm just, just you're not gonna, you might have to, you're gonna have to. What happened to create that, that sea change? Several things, some going back to the bust in the housing market in 2007, 8, 9, 10. Very few people could buy a home then, so builders stopped building for like four years. People started moving to Florida and Tampa for several reasons, taxes, cost of living. Housing is a much better value than for the dollars in Tampa than say New York. Not to mention, Florida has a great lifestyle. A lot of people found that they could work from homes. So why live in the snow and commute if you could work from your home in the Sunshine State? There is somewhere close to a thousand people moving into the state every day and they have to have some place to live. In the meanwhile, builders are having problems getting contractors and material to build. Have you been to Lowe's or Home Depot lately? I was in a plumbing section the other day over the weekend and the shelves are pretty much empty. With all that being said, there are several advantages to a new home. You should probably take a look at it. As a final thought, I get asked multiple times a week, do I think there's going to be another housing bubble blow up? You know, I'm not an economist. I just go on what I know and common sense. There are a couple of simulators between now and the Great Recession housing bubble. Prices are increasing every day. I mean, year over year, we're up about 15% over the year. People are buying homes without even seeing them, almost frantically. On the other hand, there are some huge dissimilarities. Back then, someone could get a mortgage if they could just put an X on an application. People were buying homes that 
basically had no business buying one and they were stretching to get that. Mortgage companies were accepting appraisals that were pretty much made up to fit the loan. Investors were buying contracts on homes that they hadn't even put up yet, planning to sell the home before they closed on it. Everybody in the process, including real estate agents, were in on the game. Well, you know, you can't do that anymore. You actually have to prove you can afford the home and have the financial backup to support that. And then there's the market. Millennials are coming into their own. They've, they've got careers. They've paid down some of their student loans. They're having children and need some place other than an apartment to rent. They're the ones buying the new homes as starters. I mean, they have to, because baby boomers are staying put in their homes. There really is no reason to move. I mean, it's age is just a number, right? Is this mess going to continue? My guess is yes, for at least 18 to 24 months. Do I believe there will be a huge decrease in home prices? No, I don't. My thought is that the prices will, price increases will taper off to a more realistic number. With the number of people moving into the state, buying homes and making Florida their home, I don't believe there will be a crash anywhere that anywhere near what we experienced before. So there you go, my suggestions to getting your offer accepted and a piece of my mind, and which didn't take long. Any questions, make your comments down below. I will respond. If you would like more information on real estate in the Tampa Bay area, watch this video. If you have not already done so, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. You're not gonna wanna miss out on our next video. Thanks for watching and go out and make it a great day.